young people globally who want to be like Elon Musk. What's your advice to them? I think that probably they shouldn't want to be <laughs> you. <laughs> it, it, I think it sounds better than it is. Okay, so how do you do it? How do you just not rely on wishful thinking and hope as a strategy? I'm going to give you three ways to do it. Rise and shine, it's Espresso time. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe you have Michael Jordan-level talent at something, and I want you to find it, embrace it, and use it to make a difference in the world. So let's start your day off right. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message. Don't rely on wishful thinking. Over to you, Elon Musk. I wake up every morning. Young people globally who want to be like Elon Musk, what's your advice to them? I think that probably they shouldn't want to be <laughs> you. <laughs> it, it, I think it sounds better than it is. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, not as much fun being me as you'd think. I don't know. You don't think so? No. There's definitely, it could be worse for sure, but it's, I'm not sure I want to be me. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> if, uh, you know, I, I think advice, I mean, if you want to make progress in things, I think the best analytical framework for understanding the future is physics. Um, I'd recommend studying the, uh, the, the thinking process around physics, like, not just not, not not the equations. I mean, the equations certainly they're helpful, but the the, the way of thinking in physics is the, it's the best framework for understanding things that are counterintuitive. And um, and you know, always taking the position that you are some degree wrong, and your goal is to be less wrong over time. And one of the biggest mistakes people generally make, and I'm guilty of it too, is wishful thinking. You know, like you want something to be true, even if it isn't true. Um, and so you ignore the things that, uh, you, you ignore the real truth because of what you want to be true. This is a very difficult trap to avoid. Um, and like I said, it's certainly one that I uh, find myself in having problems with. But if you just take that approach of you're always to some degree wrong and your goal is to be less wrong and, and solicit critical feedback, particularly from friends, like friends, particularly friends, if somebody loves you, they want the best for you. They don't want to tell you the bad things. Um, so you have to ask them, you know, and say, really, I, I really do want to know. <laughs> and, and then they'll tell you. I think hope is badly needed for entrepreneurs, but hope is a terrible strategy. You need to be optimistic about where you're going, what you can accomplish, the, the big world changing things that you're going to do. But just to expect it to happen and not recognize the truth, the faults, the holes is a blind spot. I just came back from an event in California, a big YouTube event, and I was meeting with one of the three guys in the YouTube space that I really respect, look up to, listen to advice from. And I sat down with him over a meal and I said, listen, tear my channel apart. I want you to be harsh. I want you to be brutal. I'm hoping that he tells me I'm stupid. Like I tell, tell me I'm stupid. Tell me I'm missing these huge holes in my YouTube strategy because that's great. If he can point out why I'm wrong, where I'm failing, it allows me to do so much better. If he says, you know what? Your thumbnails suck or your titles suck or you really should be doing playlists or you should be tagging better. Whatever the thing is, if he can give me something that points out just how massive a mistake I'm making, it's amazing. That's what I want to hear. That's what will serve me to go on and do better. And so I think understanding that you need to know where the holes are so you can address them instead of pretending like there's no hole in your boat and you continue on paddling. It's like, no, there's a hole. We got to fix that hole and we're going to keep on paddling. It's not only being realistic and only being truthful all the time because you need a little bit of the optimism. You need to have that blind belief that something is going to happen. You have to create a world that doesn't exist. But to never consider the downside, to never think about the holes and how to plug them, I think is a weak point for a lot of entrepreneurs. Okay, so how do you do it? How do you just not rely on wishful thinking and hope as a strategy? I'm gonna give you three ways to do it. Number one is have a mission. You have to have a big mission that excites you, that you're driving towards, that 
you get up every morning and you want to do. I want to solve the world's biggest problem, untapped human potential. I think people are doing the wrong thing a lot in their lives. I think people have Michael Jordan level talent at something and they're not doing it and they know they're destined for something bigger and they're stuck in a job that they hate. I hate that. I want to solve that. I want you to recognize the talent, the insane talent that you have and to believe in it, to make something amazing happen for yourself, your family, your community, the world. I think you have that ability and it's my mission to pull that out. I'm forever insanely optimistic about it. I bet on Team Human all day long. I bet on each individual one of you guys. You have that ability. You will not convince me otherwise. I I think you were a genius. I think you could do amazing things. And having that mission for your business, why you do the thing that you do has to be a shining light because starting a business is so dark, has so many negative periods, has so much pain that you have to go through that you have to have something that is pushing you forward. Number two is be stubborn on the why, but flexible on the how. This is what is so important and what a lot of entrepreneurs fail to understand. They have a why, you know what you want, you have your mission, great, that's amazing, that's gonna drive you every day. But don't get so stubborn on how to get there. So many people feel like they have the perfect plan and that's the plan that's gonna help them get to their mission, that's what's gonna help us get the mission accomplished. But you're probably wrong. You're just wrong and that's okay. Almost no business, when they started, what their plan was, ended up being the plan that made them ultra successful. They pivoted, they changed multiple times. And so it doesn't matter, expect the change. Your plan will likely not work, but that's okay. It doesn't mean don't plan. You plan to the best of your capabilities, you execute against that plan, and then when changes happen, you adjust. That's part of the game. You will never figure out all of the variables sitting on your couch at home trying to create the perfect plan. And so you are super stubborn. This is why I'm doing it. This is, this is why I'm doing this thing. The what is super important, but how you get there doesn't matter. This is a tangible example. I want to solve the world's biggest problem. How do I do it? I don't care. I'm doing YouTube because I think that's the best way to be able to do it. I think it's it's the best combination of my skills and where there is an audience to be able to influence to be able to influence a lot of people, right? I think that's, that's why I do it. Why did I write the books? It's a chance to be able to reach a lot more people. I don't do one-on-one -on -one consulting. I don't think it's a chance to fulfill my mission. I don't think that how helps me get to where I want to go. But if YouTube's relevance dies down and something else picks up, I'm going to go do that thing. I'm not attached to YouTube. I don't need to do this for the rest of my life. I'm going to be trying to accomplish my mission for the rest of my life, but I know that the how will change. Where people who get so obsessed about the how, they end up locking themselves in. One, because the how will have to change, because the market will change, because consumers are going somewhere else. The way the world's changing, so much changes in a couple of years, in a year, in six months, that to think that you know where the world's gonna be in five years for your five-year plan is ridiculous. And two, when you lock yourself into doing the same thing over and over and over again, you get bored. There's so many entrepreneurs who get bored. They get bored of doing the same thing day in, day out. It's exciting at the beginning. You get to create your own life, your own plan, that's why you left the company to go do your own thing. But I guarantee you, if you are not updating, if you are not changing, if you are not adding variety as a creative entrepreneur, you will get bored. And so you need to be stubborn about the why and what you want to accomplish, but ultra flexible in how you get there, having no ego attached to how you actually accomplish that mission. And number three is ask the little man. The little man is a person who's the hater, is the person who hates on your ideas, who tells you why it's not going to work out, points out all the holes. The little man is dangerous at the beginning because if you don't have any confidence in yourself, if you're not secure in yourself and your mission, then when somebody throws crap all over it, you might not want to do it anymore. You might value their opinion, their judgment, and you don't want to go off and pursue that thing anymore. If your parents tell you it's a stupid idea, or your friends tell you it's a stupid idea, you may not have the confidence to do it anymore. But if you are solid in yourself, you are solid in your mission, you know why you want to do it, it's going to happen, then talking to the little man, talking to the haters is actually really constructive. Because <laughs> all of the points that they give you as to why it's not going to work out is great for you to consider. There was a guy who I used to work with uh, on some of these videos, and every time I asked his opinion on something, he would always give me the, the most negative response. He'd always look for the worst in every video that I made. If I'm, if I'm highlighting Elon Musk here, he'll tell me all the reasons why it's a stupid video or it's not gonna work out. Like, this is great. Because some people think like that. And by getting his negative opinion, it actually refocuses my message to make it even stronger. I have to make sure I address those points so that people who think that way can be shifted as well. As much as it might be weird to have somebody who's, who's a, a hater or a negative thinker or a small thinker on your team, 
having one person like that around you that you can ask questions to actually can help make you stronger and make you better. Just don't let it infect you and don't let it infect the people on your team too. Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, I wanna know, what is the single best piece of advice that you have received from a little man? The best piece of advice you've ever gotten from a hater? <laughs> I wanna hear from you, leave it down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is, much love. I'll see you again tomorrow morning for another shot of espresso and enjoy the bonus clip. I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I remember it was three hours and 15 minutes at one stage and, and I had this great editor who I worked with again called Steve Rosenblum. And uh, Rosenblum and I were sitting there scratching our heads figuring how do we get a half hour out of this? And uh, we couldn't figure it out because we were so close to it. And it took a studio head to come in and give us a general note. That was Sherry Lansing. She gives us this general note. And we're like, we look at her and we look at each other and he said, what would she know? How did she get this job? You know, and 24 hours later, we're going, she's right. She's Ray's right. first studio hit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, but, the, but you know what? That simple note that she gave us enabled us to go from three hours 15 to two hours 48. And it just made the thing snap it's all along. The difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big deal. And yeah. I do think it's interesting how we sort of expect, like, like a, a few months ago, I got injured and I, I couldn't work out for like about a week or so. And it was like, why did I think that I could go my whole life without being like, why did I think that I would right. never be injured? Right. Um, yeah. Why did I think it would, I would always, it would, every time I roll my ankle, it would turn out to be nothing. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes it turns out to be something. And, yeah. and, and, and the more we can, the more we can tell ourselves that these are, um, realities of life the less devastated will be when they happen and the more quickly we can bounce back from them do you know what i mean like if exactly. if someone does something uh rude or uh you know screwed up to you and you're why did this happen this is so unfair how could they do this to me and all you're doing is wallowing in self-pity you know that's precious energy that you're not spending towards your you know, your reply towards your response or what you're gonna do instead. And if you tell yourself a story long enough, you start to believe it. Once you believe it, you act like it. I have tussled with a whale out of handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. Now you know I'm bad. Only last week I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean I make medicine sick. <laughs> the fundamental key to success it can take between 18 and 254 days of taking action for a new habit to stick. I've created a new course called 254 Confidence where every single day for 254 days, I will be sending you a video between 30 seconds and five minutes long that you start your morning with around making you feel confident. It's absolutely free. Check out the link in the description below to get access.